Last time, we have talked about routing. By configuring the middleware pipeline, we're able to map a HTTP request to a particular action method. The next step is to transfer the information from the HTTP request to the action methods so that the action methods can have enough information to process the HTTP request. If we are imagining the API as a black box, from the left hand side, we have HTTP requests comes in. But within the API, we need information in objects. It is similar to on the right hand side. When we have data stores, we need to map the data from data stores to objects within the API. And from that side, we're using ORM to help us to map the data from database to objects within the API. And these objects are called domain models. Similar to the right hand side, from the left side, the requests need to be mapped to objects, and these objects are what we call data transfer objects. Similar to ORM, on the left-hand side, we have model binding provided by the MVC application framework that maps data from the request to data transfer objects. For model binding, we have three different data sources. One is from ROTs. An example is if we have a ROT, that is API slash products slash number one, which is the product ID. And this ID is from the rot and it will be mapped to our object. In this case, it's gonna be a, just a parameter. And the second data source for model binding is from query strings. An example would be API slash products. Following the previous example, we're gonna say question mark ID equals one. And this ID equals one is the, is the query string. The ID will also be mapped to a parameter in our action method. These are simple types. That's why they're only mapped to like simple parameters. But the third data source is request body, which is usually carried by HTTP post or HTTP put or HTTP patch. The information from the request body can be complex types and can be mapped to objects. Let's jump to Visual Studio. This is the same project that we used for demonstrating the previous episode, the Web API routing. And now we're using this for demonstrating model binding. So first of all, I want to change this from uh, the base class from controller to controller base, right? Because controller is for both MVC and API. But in this case, we're only developing API. So we can use controller base. And another thing we can do here is to use API controller. We use this attribute to tell the MVC application framework that this controller is only used for API and it kind of enforces some rules. For example, attribute routing is enforced and some other things. And let's focus on model binding. So in this case, we're using a rod binding. As you can see, this ID is passed in as 101. If we don't specify the rod and if we just leave it as this, so if we define like this, this rod and this rod will be the same, will be API slash products. So it'll be conflict with each other. Commenting out the first one, just, show the, just to show the second one. So without specifying the rod template, we can pass in a square string. And as you can see, the ID is passed in 108. Another thing we can do is to do a combination of both. So we can use the rod to pass in ID and then use query string to pass in, for example, uh, passing status. Let's call it is active. And then I can say status like this. So the ID will be from the rod and is active will be from the query string. And what you can do is to explicitly say that this is from query. You don't have to do it, but sometimes if we want to do it, then we can do this. So we having API slash product slash two twenty three for example, and then is active equals two. And now you can see ID is 23, 
is active is true. And you don't have to specify the query string. If you don't, it will be the default value, which is going to be false. Okay, so these are so far simple types, primitive types. Let's try, let's try to pass in an object through the, through the query string. Let's define the object first. And I'm going to call it product DTO. And it's going to be pretty simple. It will have a ID and it will have a name. And we're going to have a HTTP get. And let's call it get by uh, object. And we're going to pass in the object from the query string. So we're going to say from query. And then we're going to say product DTO. And product DTO. And we are going to return the information about the product. So it will be product ID, and which is ID and name of the product, which is going to be the name. Okay, let's run it. So we'll have API slash products, and we have ID equals, let's say 222, and name equals well, my product, for example. Oh, sorry. It's query string supposed to be question mark and we're hitting over breakpoint. So this is a product and product has two to two and my product like that. Um, what if we don't provide anything? You can see because this is a object type and ID is a primitive type, it will have the default value and string is an object. So it is a uh, null. Default value is null. Right. Another thing I want to demonstrate is a HTTP post. And basically, we're going to do the same thing. Let's say I'm going to return action result. But this is going to come in from the body instead of. So I'm going to do something like this. And for HTTP post, I'm going to use Postman. So I will create new product. And the type is post. And the rot is API slash product. And the header, specify on con content type is application JSON. The body that I'm posting, I'm selecting raw, and then I have ID and name is laptop computer. And here I'm specifying this payload is in JSON format. So when I click on send, I got my breakpoint triggered. And we can see that the data came in with one and laptop computer. So this is model binding, which helps developers to pass information into the API. So with routing, the MVC application framework helps to locate and execute the endpoint. And with model binding, it helps to pass information into the endpoint. In the future episodes, I'm planning to cover authentication. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, please give it a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next episode.